Yes, my people of God, we are into the end of this year. And uh, uh, in another 10 days, we are going to finish off this year. And what an year it has been, you know. Yeah, we just go and just uh, look back of all that God had done in our lives. It's really, you know, in, in, it's, it's, it's uncomprehensible. You just cannot understand, you know, because God has been so awesome, so wonderful, you know. We don't have enough words to describe His love, His power, His mercies, you know. It's, it's really indescribable. I really want to thank God for this entire year. You know, this year was something different. This year was most difficult for many people because, you know, everywhere this coronavirus spread and so many people were in fear and many people, you know, were affected in the, in the health and also with regard to their finances, many people were affected, many businesses closed, many people, you know, suffered great losses. And, you know, it's, it was like almost the world was turning upside down. And everybody had a question, a great question in their minds as to what would happen in these coming days. You know, the Bible says, <clears throat> God is in control. Hallelujah. He knows what he's doing. He knows what is happening. He knows each and every aspect that's going on. Because God is an omnipotent God. Hallelujah. He's an omnipresent God. He is everywhere and he does everything according to what he desires. But the greatest and the wonderful thing was that God kept us safe this year. And within these 10 days, you know, after these 10 days, we're going to enter a new year. We never thought about it. We never, you know, especially me. I, I never thought, I never thought that I would make this year because I would have lost my life in July. You know, that would have been the end of my life and my journey. But I really thank God. God added me again the years in my life. You know, God told me that whenever possible, you always talk about the thing which I have done for you. Keep testifying of what I have done in your life. And, you know, most of the times I at least mention a little bit about, you know, God, what God had done in my life. Because if I don't thank God, you know, it would be so ungrateful. Hallelujah. Maybe it, it may be every day. But God always told me, you got to keep on telling. you got to keep on testifying of what I have done in your life. Hallelujah. And what I want to do in your life this year is going to be something great. Hereafter, you know, I really thank God. I mean it, my people of God. It's not just my words I'm telling you. I mean it because I just went through the most horrible phase in my life. In all these years, I just went through, I mean, I've gone through many situations, but not as bad and as worse as this was. Hallelujah. And God told me, he, he allowed this situation. He, he allowed this disease to, you know, almost take my life. Almost. Not to take my life. Almost. Because God took me to the deepest point where every hope was lost. When there was no hope, when there was no help coming out from everywhere, Everybody almost had given up on my survival. And everybody was just waiting for the worst thing to happen. Oh, hallelujah. And my body always, almost, I mean, went into sepsis. It was so bad as that. I just didn't have a lung infection. Most part of my lungs were affected. And my body went into sepsis. And I was looking straight at death. 
why I'm telling you again, I want to re- just, you know, tell great things that God has done. You know, when every hope was lost, everything went away. God touched me. And when he touched me, he touched me in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Because the disease was removed from the root. Hallelujah. The very next day, my temperature became normal. I began to eat. And, I, I, you know, it, it was almost like I began to have a, almost a normal kind of life, you know. It was so awesome. It was so amazing. And everybody, most of them could not believe what was happening. Because one day down, I was staring at death. But the other day, the next day, I just got up. Hallelujah. And I was doing everything possible. I was getting back the strength. I was getting back every, you know, the thing which I had lost in my body. My health became, you know, God restored my health in such a massive way. In an amazing way. But I got back everything. And today, I stand as a testimony. You know, God does heal. There's no doubt about that. But I want to tell the greatest thing that God did in my life, you know. More than the healing, He changed my life. He changed my nature. He cleansed me. And He taught me so many things. And wherever I went wrong, God told me, you make it right. You you said it right. And you know, all those things God taught me. All along the time when I was suffering in the disease, there was something else that God was doing in my life. Hallelujah. He was teaching me. He was humbling me. He was, he was breaking me. He was molding me. He was melting me. He was doing all kinds of things. And today I stand as a mighty testimony. Not just because I can say he's a healer. Of course, he's a mighty, mighty healer. But also, the greatest miracle is the changing of my nature. Hallelujah. The greatest miracle is, you know, getting rid of every sin in my life and to stand before the Lord as a holy and a righteous person. Amen. And that was the work what what God was doing in my life. That was the work. Amen. And tonight, my brother, my sister, as you're listening to what I'm saying, you know, I, I didn't want to tell today, uh, but I just felt like telling this. Because, you know, it was so wonderful. And not only that, God restored back the fellowship. And today, we all, all have joined together on Zoom. And as a people who came, you know, all of, many of you who came to Bijapur, and you were touched by God, you were saved, and you, 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 you heard about God, you knew about, you, 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 I mean, you got to know more things about God here. And you know, so many things you are involved in this uh, Bijapur church and this Bijapur fellowship. And here we are together again. Hallelujah. God has joined us back. It's all because of His grace and mercy, my people of God. You know, because when God touched and healed me, He restored also back not only my health, He restored everything that I had lost, including this fellowship, which I so much cherish, you know, with people like you. Because I know in my heart, I really know in my heart, you know, the thing I had for you when you were all in Bijapur. You know, the same, the, the same burden is still for every one of you, my people of God. You're all so close to my heart. I can never forget you all. Because some of you, I have, you know, birthed you in Christ. And I know I have that so much of burden for all of you. And also, it grieves me when certain people are despising this and certain people are not uh, giving heed to this but whatever it is my people of God all those who are ready to join with us 
All those who are ready to get, I mean, extend your hand with us. You know, God is going to really do a great thing. Hallelujah. When I say great thing, it's going to be something very different. It's going to be something very distinct. It's not going to be as you think. It's going to be something awesome and wonderful. Oh, hallelujah. I, I has not seen it. I has, ear has not heard it, nor has entered into the mind the things which God has prepared for the people who love him. Hallelujah. There are great things that God is going to do. And let us believe that. Let's believe it. It's a great thing that God is going to do. The Bible says that, my people of God. You don't worry. Maybe today I don't have much time to share the things. But I'm just going to t uh, tell a little bit. You know what God had done. And this, after this 10 days or so, we are going to enter into a new year. And as you are going to enter into this new year, you are, you are going to see a great, great things happening. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Yes, uh, one of you can please read it. Hallelujah. Yes. And we know all, the, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Believe that. Sometimes we have to go through tough situations. But let's not murmur. Let's not give up. Because God is working in our lives. God is working in on, on us. He wants us to be a beautiful vessel of honor. Because if we are going to suffer with Him, we are also going to be glorified together. Hallelujah. From suffering to glory. You know, in the same book of Romans chapter 8, uh, you can please uh, read from verse 17 and 18. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, if, if children and hairs, hairs of God and John hairs with Christ, if we need we suffer with Him, we may also be glorified together. You know what this suffering is all about? Because the Bible says in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 29, we are not just called to believe on Him, but also to suffer for Him. What kind of suffering is God talking here? You know, we may have to go through so many things because we want to please God. We want to stand for God. We want to live for God. Jesus said, if any man wants to come behind me, in Matthew chapter, uh, Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, 24, you can read it, read it later. If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Deny yourself. If you want to follow Christ, you got to deny yourself. You got to, you know, walk in the ways of God. You got to take your cross daily. What is that cross? Taking up the cross is doing the will of God. And doing will of God and suffering for that. Doing good and suffering. Hallelujah. You thank God for that. Because... 
we are not just called to believe but also to suffer today people are not ready to suffer for god people are not ready to suffer for christ everything has to be very perfect no god will take us through some situations through some tough situations in our lives to teach us to make us to melt us to mold us to be like him Hallelujah. You be ready for that my God's people. You should never murmur when God takes you through tough situations. Because you must believe everything that works for you. Everything that's happening in your life. All the things that are working together, it's for your good because you love God. What is loving God according to the scripture loving God is obeying every commandment It's not just telling by our mouth saying yes lord i love you We may say with our mouth it's good no problems no issues with that but how is our love really determined it's only determined by our obedience to the word of the living god Jesus said if you love me then keep my commandments If anybody doesn't keep my commandments he has no love. That's what the Lord said. And today if I and you really want to love God then we have to obey every word of God. That is the true love according to the scripture. Come on say hallelujah. My brother, my sister, today as you're listening to the word of God, don't get get deceived because you know, we may be deceived if we are not careful. The Bible says even the elect will be deceived. And the Bible says be careful, be al- be on alert, be watchful. So if you have to check yourself whether you're loving god you have to examine yourself and just see whether you are really desiring to obey every word of god hallelujah even though it means suffering even though it may mean losing something are you willing to love god This is a great great question that we all need to put it, put ourselves. Hallelujah. You know, all the suffering that what God is talking about here. He says it's nothing compared to the glory that we are all going to be facing. Hallelujah. Oh, when we meet Christ, when we go there, what a glorious day that will be. It's nothing compared to the sufferings what we are having in this world. You know God the Bible says God tested Abraham. You know that story. God tested Abraham and said to him Abraham He said take your son your only son Isaac whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you this son the son of promise when abraham didn't have any child when he was i mean when he was of the age he he passed the age of childbearing but yet the bible says he believed god and god rewarded him with a son of promise he he said there be multitude of people i will give you as a blessing but now the same god is asking isaac i need your son isaac and you know what what would have been the situation of abraham oh god you gave me your son you gave me a son to me after so many years of waiting oh god i got it but now you're asking the same sum did he question god no maybe so many things would have gone through the minds of abraham but one thing he knew he had he had that faith he had that commitment he wanted to do everything what god said that is called as obedience hallelujah he really loved god more than anything 
He was ready to offer his own son. He was willing to give up everything for God. And tonight as we are listening to the word of God, my people of God, how is your heart tonight? Are you willing to give up everything for God? If God asks you something, are you ready? You put this question to yourself. You know, Abraham didn't do anything. He just obeyed God. He said, my son, come. He said, God will provide for himself the lamb for burnt offering. Because Isaac was asking, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And the Bible says, they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham... You, you see here, Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Hallelujah. Till the end, God allowed Abraham to do everything. But when Abraham took the knife in his hand to slay his son, God called Abraham, Abraham, do not lay your hand on the lad. Or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son. Your only son from me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This was the this was kind of commitment that God was looking from Abraham. And that commitment God confirmed. When Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And God, my people of God, God allows you. To stretch out your hand and take the knife. Till you take the knife, God will allow you to that point. He will test you till that point. To know whether you are going to be obedient to his voice or not. And this is a suffering for every one of us. Because to come to that point, to come till that point, we have to go through many sufferings. Emotional, physical, so many things. I hope you all understand what I'm talking about. You, God wants you to come to the point of picking up your knife. Amen. Are you understanding what God is trying to tell you? Hallelujah. Until the time you take your knife, God is going to zero on you. He's going to take you through all paths. You are going to go through all confusions. You're going to go through all questionings. You're going to go through all murmurings. You've got to go through every situation. But my people of God, when you go through those situations, you get, you got to say, yes, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I will do your will, oh God, not my will, your will. I will obey your word. I will obey whatever you say. I'm ready to do what you say. Hallelujah. Tonight, are you ready to do that, my God's people? Check your hearts tonight. Check your hearts tonight. It's serious. Come to that point. And when you come to that final point, God will reveal his mighty work in your life. Hallelujah. Till that time, God will break you. He will melt you. He will mold you. He will take you through all kinds of situations to make you pure, clean, and holy. Amen. That's why he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In all these things, what we are going to do is seek first. Nothing else matters for us. First, I need to please my God. First, I need to obey his commandments. First, I need to seek his righteousness. Oh, first, 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 we got to keep on telling that. And you do that, you get a massive strength in your life. God testified about Abraham. I know now that you fear me. Since you have not withheld your son. What are you withholding away from God? Is there anybody? Is there anything in your life? That you are withholding from God? Give it to God tonight. Give it. 
Are you ready? And before I close, I want to ask you a question. Are you ready to give up everything to God? What is, what is that you're still holding on? What is there which you have not surrendered to God? What is there which you have not, you know, given to God in a whole way? Are you withheld, withholding something? Are you withholding something from God? You're not ready to give it to God? You want to keep it for yourself? No. Repent tonight. Change your mind and say, Lord, I give it. And when you do that, God will help you. God's power will come upon you. It will strengthen you. It will take you in a beautiful way. And it will make you, you know, to obey his word. Hallelujah. Ultimately, everything that works out, that happens in our lives, it all works out for our good. Come on, everybody say hallelujah to all those who love him. You're really loving him. Be ready to give everything to God. Don't withhold anything away from God. Be ready to give everything to God. And that's what God is looking at you tonight. You're hearing today the word of God. You're hearing today the truth. You're hearing today the reality. Surrender. Surrender, my God's people. Yes. I would like to close now. Because we are already getting light. But now, I just say and ask you to make that prayer. Yes, Father. I give all to you. Maybe, Lord, I had this thing in my life, but now I'm ready to give it. I'm ready to surrender everything to you. I give it all to you. That as you pray, God will strengthen you. God will strengthen you. I give all to you. Say. I give all to you. Come on, everybody say, I give all to you. God. Come on, everybody. With tears in your eyes, with your hands lifted up towards God, wherever you are right now, God is looking at you, my brother, my sister. You need to make a commitment before God tonight and say, God, I give all to you. And that's what God is looking at right now. Come on, open your hearts. Stretch out before God. And say it again. Oh, I give all to you. Come on, my brother, my sister, give it to God. I give all. Take all of me. Please take all of me. Yes, Father, please take all of me. Please take all of me. I give it to you, Master. Hallelujah. Yes. Father, tonight, 
as all of the people who are surrendering to you, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Oh, God, give them your power and your grace and your anointing, oh, Father, to do what you tell them to do, Lord. Let them feel your strength. Let them feel your touch, oh, God. Oh, Lord, let their hearts be convicted tonight, oh, God. Oh, God, spirit of grace, spirit of truth, lead everybody in the truth. Lead everybody, oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 So even after this prayer, you just keep committing to, God, committing to God and just continue to talk to God. Yes, God's people, just continue to talk to Him. God will do great things. Thank you, Father. Tonight, Lord, you have been with us, oh God, and with all the people, Lord, who may have touched now, Father. Father, do that deep convicting work in every heart, oh God. Thank you. You're going to raise up a massive army in these last days, oh God. Thank you. Who are going to stand for the truth and who are really going to be ready to give up everything for God and to do what God says. Thank you, Jesus. Not just a namesake Christian, not just a so-called Christian, oh God, but the Christians who really are going to stand on your word and are ready to do everything what God says and ready to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And Lord, in true righteousness, in true holiness, oh God, you're going to shape your people that way. Thank you for that. Thank you. Bless everybody who, have came, who came on the Zoom tonight. And also we pray for those who couldn't make it tonight. Bless them as well and be with them, Father. Thank you for all the good things. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. And uh, I just want to take this time to thank God for everything. And also, I just want to uh, say uh, Happy Christmas and Merry Christmas because... I don't think we can meet on Friday, but we will certainly meet on Sunday, the next Sunday. So till then, you'll be strong in the Lord, walk in His Word, and especially what God talked with you tonight. You'll be ready to do what this, okay? God will help you. So have a nice time with God, and may God's name be glorified in your life all these days. Thank you. Praise God. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye. God bless. Amen.